Ancient Egypt is famed for its majestic pyramids, intricate hieroglyphs, and fascinating mythology. However, we mustn't forget about the peculiar customs and rituals that appear grim by today's standards. From scarification to mummification, ancient Egyptians led a unique way of life that simultaneously mesmerizes and scares. In this video, we will explore the 15 most terrifying things that were considered normal in ancient Egypt and shed light on their cultural significance. Ancient Egyptian society was known for its profound veneration of animals, which played a crucial role in religious and cultural traditions. Cults dedicated to specific animals, thought to embody the qualities of certain gods or goddesses, were prevalent throughout Egypt. These cults revered animals ranging from large, aggressive creatures like crocodiles and lions, to smaller and more familiar ones, like cats and birds. While modern people may find this unsettling, understanding the cultural and religious significance of these practices can provide valuable insights into the beliefs of ancient Egyptians. Many of these cults were associated with temples dedicated to specific deities, Devotees would make offerings and perform rituals in honor of these animals, often viewed as manifestations or symbols of the gods. For example, the Apis bull was associated with the god Ptah, who was worshipped in Memphis, while the crocodile god Sobek was revered in the city of Crocodilopolis. Ritual sacrifices were a critical component of sacred animal cults in ancient Egypt. To offer animals as sacrifices to the gods, they were carefully selected and raised. It was believed that this appeased the gods, provided protection, and brought prosperity to the people. Animals were often adorned with valuable jewelry or other decorations, treated with great respect, and ritually purified before being sacrificed. After the ritual, their bodies were usually mummified and buried in a sacred necropolis. In some cases, large numbers of mummified animals have been found in burial sites, indicating the scale and importance of this practice in ancient Egyptian society. The topic of cannibalism in ancient Egyptian society sparks much debate and speculation among historians and archaeologists. Although some evidence points to the presence of such practices, it remains unclear whether these cases were isolated or part of a broader cultural tradition. Some texts from that period, such as the Pyramid Texts, contain excerpts that seemingly hint at cannibalism. For example, in the Cannibal Hymn found in the tomb of Pharaoh Unas, it describes how the king consumes parts of the gods' bodies to take on their divine power. However, the majority of scholars agree that these texts should be understood metaphorically rather than as a literal description of cannibalism cases. They rather represent a desire to acquire divine power and eternal life than a real practice of consuming human flesh. However, there are also scarce archaeological evidence that may indicate cases of cannibalism in ancient Egypt. Human remains have been found in several areas with signs of dismemberment and decapitation, which could indicate such practice. However, the evidence is not compelling and it is difficult to determine whether these findings represent isolated cases, ritual practices, or the result of famine or other extreme conditions. The afterlife played a significant role in the culture and religion of ancient Egypt, and funerary texts were an integral part of the ritual preparation for the post-mortem journey. These texts, often inscribed on tomb walls, papyrus scrolls, or other burial objects, were intended to provide the deceased with instructions and protection as they navigated the complex and potentially dangerous realm of the afterlife. Several types of funerary texts were used throughout the history of ancient Egypt, including the pyramid texts, coffin texts, and the Book of the Dead. These contained a collection of spells, prayers, and rituals designed to help the deceased overcome various obstacles they might encounter in the afterlife. These texts addressed such issues as the judgment before the god Osiris, where the deceased's heart was weighed on the scales of truth, or the perilous journey through the underworld. The spells in the funerary texts were often very specific, addressing personal problems or potential dangers. For instance, spells could ensure the deceased access to food and water, protect them from evil spirits, 
or give them the ability to transform into various creatures to facilitate their journey. The text also contained instructions on proper behavior and actions that the deceased should perform to gain favor with the gods and secure a place in eternal paradise. Incestuous marriages, particularly between pharaohs and their siblings, were a noteworthy aspect of ancient Egyptian society, which may seem highly questionable to modern people. However, they were an integral part of the social, political, and religious life of the time and served specific purposes in the complex world of ancient Egypt. To understand why such relationships were deemed acceptable and even necessary, it is important to examine the cultural and ideological reasons underlying this practice. As rulers of ancient Egypt, pharaohs were considered divine beings descended from the gods themselves. They were recognized as earthly incarnations of divine power, and their role was to maintain the principle of world order in the universe, known as Mayat. Marriage to siblings, who were obviously also considered of divine origin, was a means of preserving the bloodline's purity and ensuring that their offspring would inherit their divine status. Among pharaohs, sibling marriages also served a political purpose, helping to strengthen alliances, prevent power struggles, and preserve the continuity of the royal family. As members of one family, siblings were expected to remain loyal to the crown, thus minimizing the risk of treachery or rebellion. This practice helped maintain a stable, centralized power structure and strengthened the royal line. Thus, the cultural norms and beliefs of ancient Egypt played a significant role in justifying these incestuous marriages. Many Egyptian myths and religious texts depicted divine sibling couples such as Isis and Osiris who were central figures in the Egyptian pantheon. By emulating these divine relationships, the pharaoh aimed to reinforce his godlike status and strengthen his power. In ancient Egypt, mummification was an integral part of preparing the deceased for the afterlife. It was a complex and labor-intensive procedure performed by skilled embalmers, often priests or elite representatives. Although the practice of preserving the dead is viewed as gruesome and harsh today, it was closely tied to the religious beliefs and cultural traditions of the ancient Egyptians. The mummification process involved several complicated stages, which could take up to 70 days. First, the body of the deceased was washed and cleaned. Then, the brain was delicately extracted through the nose using special hooks, and the internal organs, such as the liver, lungs, stomach, and intestines, were removed through an incision on the left side of the abdomen. These organs were stored separately in canopic jars, ritual vessels, or wrapped in linen cloth, and placed back into the body cavity. Then the body was dehydrated using a naturally occurring salt called natron. The body was covered with this for about 40 days to remove all moisture and prevent decay. After this, the body was thoroughly cleaned and coated with oils to protect the skin. Finally, the corpse was wrapped in several layers of linen bandages. Each layer was carefully applied, and protective amulets and talismans were often placed between them. Then the bandages were sealed with resin or gum to keep the body intact during its journey to the afterlife. The practice of human sacrifice in ancient Egypt remains a contentious and widely debated topic among historians and archaeologists. While there is evidence to suggest that human sacrifices in some form took place, the scale and prevalence of this practice remain unclear. To fully understand the complexity of this subject, it's crucial to examine the available evidence, historical context, and broader cultural perceptions of ancient Egyptian society. Archaeological finds related to the early dynastic period suggest that human sacrifices may have occurred in some form. The discovery of servant tombs in the burial complexes of early pharaohs has led to speculation about human sacrifices. These tombs contain the remains of individuals who appear to have been buried simultaneously with the pharaoh, leading some scholars to propose that they were ritually sacrificed to accompany and serve the ruler in the afterlife. However, alternative explanations for these burials have been suggested, such as the possibility that the deceased individuals voluntarily chose to accompany the pharaoh in death, or that they died of natural causes. However, 
Textual evidence from later periods of ancient Egypt's history, like the Middle and New Kingdoms, do not support the idea of widespread human sacrifices. While some religious texts and myths describe sacrificial rituals or actions, most scholars believe that these mentions should be understood symbolically or metaphorically, rather than as a literal description of actual events. Ancient Egyptian medicine is an intriguing blend of science, magic, and religious beliefs. Healers and doctors of this era are believed to have possessed great knowledge and skills, and their treatment methods often included complex rituals and various medicinal ingredients. Among these were parts of the human body, a practice that seems eerie and frightening to modern people. However, to understand the cultural context of this ritual and ancient Egyptian medicine as a whole, it is necessary to explore the reasons behind such a practice. Ancient Egyptian healers believed that the human body had powerful healing properties. Its use in medicine was tied to belief in sympathetic magic, an idea prevalent in many ancient cultures. It was thought that fragments of the bodies of deceased people, especially those who possessed special qualities or abilities during their lifetime, could transmit these properties to the living. For this reason, various human tissues, bones, and fluids were widely used for treatment. For example, skull fragments or bone powder were considered effective for treating headaches. Human fat was used to prepare balms and ointments for wound healing and skin conditions. Mummies, believed to be a powerful source of healing energy, were ground into powder and used as an ingredient in medicines for various ailments. While today the use of human body parts in medicine may seem horrifying to us, ancient Egyptians sincerely believed in its effectiveness. At the time, people had a limited understanding of human anatomy and diseases, so they sought to cure illnesses using the means and skills available to them. The Nile River was undoubtedly the life force of ancient Egyptian civilization, playing a pivotal role in shaping the culture, economy, and daily life of this outstanding society. The river's significance cannot be overstated, as it provided people with essential resources and dictated the rhythm of life in Egypt. By examining various aspects of the Nile's influence, we can more deeply appreciate its importance and understand the pivotal role it played in the development and sustenance of ancient Egyptian civilization. The annual floods of the Nile were the main source of fertility for agriculture in Egypt, depositing nutrient-rich silt in river floodplains and allowing the cultivation of various crops, including wheat, barley, and flax. Agriculture was the foundation of the Egyptian economy, and the predictable cycle of floods allowed farmers to develop advanced agricultural technologies that supported a prosperous and stable civilization. The Nile also served as the main transportation route for ancient Egypt, facilitating the efficient movement of goods and people along its length. The river connected various settlements and cities, promoting trade, communication, and cultural exchange. Boats, made from wooden planks or papyrus, facilitated the transportation of everything from raw materials like stone and wood to finished products such as food, textiles, and pottery. In religious and spiritual terms, the Nile also held immense significance for the ancient Egyptians. It was considered a gift from the gods, especially the god Hapi, who was associated with the annual floods. The river was seen as a manifestation of the divine, which is why numerous rituals, festivals, and ceremonies were centered around the Nile and its annual inundation. In ancient Egypt, dental care was an important aspect of health and well-being, indicating an advanced understanding of oral hygiene and dental care for its time. While modern dentistry has come a long way since the time of the pharaohs, studying dental health in ancient Egypt provides fascinating insights into daily life, diet, and medical practices of this ancient society. The main causes of dental problems in ancient Egypt were the consumption of a carbohydrate-rich diet, including bread and beer, as well as the presence of grit in food. All these factors resulted in a high incidence of dental decay, gum disease, and tooth wear among the population. To address these problems, ancient Egyptian dentists employed a variety of methods and tools to alleviate pain and treat dental diseases. Textual evidence from the Ebers Papyrus and the Edwin Smith Papyrus, 
The two most extensive medical texts of ancient Egypt describe various dental procedures and remedies. These include the use of honey and natural herbs for their antimicrobial properties, tooth extraction, and treatment of dental abscesses, and archaeological finds such as bronze forceps and bone or ivory toothpicks further attest to the existence of dental treatment practices in ancient Egypt. In addition to treating dental diseases, ancient Egyptians also practiced preventive measures to maintain oral health. The use of chewing sticks, frayed at one end, and serving as improvised toothbrushes was a common practice, and the use of natron, a naturally occurring mineral salt, was also used as a tooth cleaning powder, serving as an early version of toothpaste. One of the most horrifying customs of ancient Egypt was the practice of burying servants alive with their masters. This brutal ritual, known as retainer sacrifice, aimed to ensure a prosperous afterlife for the deceased. While the idea of taking servants into the afterlife might seem monstrous to modern people, it's essential to consider the context and beliefs associated with this practice. Retainer sacrifices were most common during Egypt's early dynastic period, roughly 3,100 to 2686 BCE, and gradually decreased as society evolved. They were mostly performed in the burials of high-ranking individuals such as pharaohs and other dignitaries. This practice was based on the belief that a person's afterlife mirrored their earthly life. Thus, to guarantee a comfortable afterlife for the deceased, their loyal servants and sometimes beloved pets were sacrificed to accompany them on their journey. Many human skeletons have been found in burials from this period, indicating the widespread practice of retainer sacrifices. Usually, the sacrificed servants were killed using poison or other methods that minimized visible damage to their bodies, as preserving physical appearances was important for the afterlife. But over time, ancient Egyptians began to change their approach to this ritual. Now, instead of servants, small figurines known as ushabti were placed in the tombs. These figures, carved from stone, wood, or faience, were intended as magical substitutes for the deceased's servants. They were inscribed with spells that allowed them to come to life in the afterlife and perform tasks and work for the deceased. In ancient Egypt, curses and their role in everyday life held significant importance. Execution rituals involving curses and the symbolic destruction of enemies were a common practice aimed at warding off evil and protecting the living from harm. They were an integral part of ancient Egyptian magic and were used for various purposes, to protect individuals or communities from evil forces, to weaken or defeat an enemy during warfare, or to maintain social order by punishing transgressors. These rituals were performed by priests, magicians, or even ordinary people, indicating a widespread belief in the power of curses. The cursing process involved the creation of material images of the supposed targets, usually in the form of clay or wax figurines, pottery shards, or papyrus scrolls with inscriptions. They bore the names or likenesses of enemies and evil forces, often accompanied by magical spells and incantations. These items were then destroyed. They were broken, stabbed, burned, or buried. Such actions symbolized the destruction of adversaries, and the removal of their harmful intentions. Execution texts, being inscriptions where the names of intended targets were recorded, provide invaluable insight into the political, social, and religious landscape of ancient Egypt. They reveal people's concerns and fears, as well as indicating alliances and conflicts that shaped the region. Ancestor veneration and honoring the dead were central elements of ancient Egyptian society, underscoring the close connection between the living and the deceased. The cult of the dead, as it is often called, revolved around the belief that the spirits of deceased family members needed sustenance, care, and recognition to ensure their well-being in the afterlife. This belief was expressed in meticulously developed rituals, offerings, and memorial ceremonies, which were crucial for maintaining harmonious relations between the realms of the living and the dead. Ancient Egyptians believed that the deceased continued to exist in a parallel world, known as the Beautiful West, or the fields of Iyalu, 
which is a mirror reflection of the world of the living. To ensure a comfortable afterlife for their departed family members, the living performed various rituals, including offering food, drink, and material gifts to the tomb, reciting prayers and spells, or participating in annual festivals honoring the deceased. Tombs and temples played a vitally important role in the cult of the dead, serving as a tangible link between the realm of the living and that of the dead. These structures were not only the final resting place for the body, but also served as a place where the living could communicate with their ancestors and pay them homage. Beautifully decorated with scenes from daily life, religious motifs, and images of the afterlife, these tombs provided the deceased with a connection to the world they had left behind. Dwarfs occupied a unique and highly valued position in ancient Egyptian society, reflecting the complex social and cultural dynamics of this ancient civilization. While in many contemporary societies, dwarfism is unfortunately regarded as a disability or an unfavorable condition, in ancient Egypt, dwarfs often enjoyed great respect and special privileges. By studying the roles and representations of dwarfs in ancient Egyptian art, texts, and everyday life, we can gain valuable insights into the values and beliefs that shaped this intriguing culture. Dwarfs often held important positions in royal courts and in the families of pharaohs. They served as craftsmen, jewelers, dancers, and performers, and were highly valued for their skills and talents. For instance, the famous dwarf Seneb under Pharaoh Khufu held the prestigious title of Chief of Dwarfs, and was immortalized in a beautifully executed statue alongside his wife and children. Artistic depictions of dwarfs in tomb paintings, statues, and other ancient Egyptian artworks often show them engaged in various activities, such as participating in religious rituals, crafts, or entertainments. These images reveal that dwarfs were considered an integral part of society, often receiving respect and admiration. The high status of dwarfs in ancient Egyptian society can also be explained by their symbolic identification with certain gods and divine qualities. It was believed that dwarfs were under the protection of the gods Bees and Ptah, who were portrayed with facial features resembling those of dwarfs. Bees, in particular, was a god associated with protection, childbirth, and the home, further enhancing the significance and reverence for dwarfs. Magic was an integral part of ancient Egyptian society. It permeated all aspects of everyday life, from medicine and religion to personal relationships and politics. The belief in the power of magic and its ability to protect, heal, and bring about beneficial changes was widespread among the population. Central to this belief was the use of amulets, which were thought to harness magical energy to influence the physical and spiritual realms. Amulets were small, often intricately decorated objects made from various materials such as stone, clay, metal, or glass. They took many forms, often depicting gods, goddesses, animals, or abstract symbols. Each amulet was believed to possess special, protective, or empowering properties. For instance, the Wajit amulet was believed to provide protection and healing, while the Jed symbolized stability and endurance. Ancient Egyptians of all classes wore these amulets as a means to attract luck, ward off negative forces, or address specific issues such as health problems or protection during childbirth. They were also placed among the mummy's wrappings or in burial sites to provide protection and support in the afterlife. The making of amulets was a highly skilled craft, often requiring deep knowledge of materials, artistic techniques, and religious symbolism. The process of creation itself was imbued with magical significance. Craftsmen would recite prayers or incantations during the making of the amulets to endow them with the desired power. The interpretation of dreams and belief in supernatural omens were significant aspects of ancient Egyptian society, reflecting deep spiritual convictions of the people and their desire to understand the surrounding world. Although these practices might seem mystical or unusual to modern people, they played a crucial role in the daily lives of the ancient Egyptians, influencing their decisions and actions in various ways. It was believed that dreams were a means of communication between the gods and people, 
often providing valuable information, prophecies, or warnings about the future. Therefore, the interpretation of dreams became a vitally important skill required by people from all strata of society, including pharaohs, priests, and ordinary people. Qualified dream interpreters analyze the symbols and images of dreams, providing guidance and advice based on their interpretations. Many ancient Egyptian texts, like the Chester Beatty Papyrus, contain records of dreams and their interpretations, offering valuable information about prevailing beliefs and societal issues. These texts illustrate a wide range of topics that were thought to be related to dreams. These include health, relationships, politics, and religious life. In addition to dreams, the ancient Egyptians also attached great importance to various omens and supernatural signs. The movement of celestial bodies, unusual weather conditions, or the behavior of animals were often viewed as signs of divine will or upcoming events. These omens were carefully studied and interpreted by priests and other knowledgeable individuals who made decisions on matters such as agriculture, warfare, and religious rituals. And that's all from me. If you liked this video, don't forget to rate it, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. Your activity is the best reward for me. Thank you for your attention. See you soon. Bye.